Hey guys, so today let's talk about the NVIDIA 3080 and the 3090 and a little bit of a build guide, what I consider to be probably the best motherboards to use, the best CPUs, and we'll talk about a couple things like maybe power supplies and even RAM. So let's get started and let's get right into it. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology. Remember to subscribe, watch my other videos, leave a comment below. Are you planning on building on the 3080 or the 3090 GPUs? And so let's get started. A lot of people have been asking me, what's the best motherboard or what's the best CPU to go with the 3080, 3090? Of course, a lot of these questions we also got on the 3070. I did a separate video addressing the 3070 specifically, just because I think that one is gonna be a very, very like mainstream card. People are very curious but the 3080 also seems to be like a tremendous value. The first question that you have to ask yourself, what type of monitor and resolution are you planning to use these GPUs with? If you want to do 1080p, even high refresh rate gaming, I think the 3070 is really where you should be looking. Unless you want to do that new 360 hertz monitor, maybe then I think the 3080 is going to be a little bit overkill, but it's going to match it up a little bit better. The 3080 and 3090 are generally going to be best at 1440p, ultra wide, and 4K plus gaming. I mentioned plus because NVIDIA did a little demonstration on 8K and while we really don't have 8K gaming yet I'm sure that's going to be coming out in the future and the 3090 is really the only GPU that's going to be able to handle that I don't even think the 3080 necessarily will so having asked that question I'm going to assume if you're getting a 3080 most likely you're going to be gaming at 1440p and above and that's going to be an absolutely amazing GPU um, we've seen that NVIDIA said that the 3080 is possibly up to two times faster than the 2080 and the 2080 was already a pretty potent GPU for 1440p and it even did 4k fairly well of course the 2080 Ti was the 4k king but now that's going to be the new 3090 so let's break it down simply if you really want to do 1080p at 360 hertz 360 fps plus maybe esports games and you want to use the 3080, of course it's going to do it, but you're going to need a very high clocking CPU. And while I'm a huge fan of AMD, and you're going to see they're going to show up a lot here, I think in this scenario, you're going to need one of Intel's chips that just clock higher, something like the 10900K or the 10700K, uh, maybe even the last generation, 9900K, 9700K. Those all generally are going to clock higher than something from AMD. In that particular case, that's where you're going to want it because 1080p is more more reliant on the CPU than necessarily on the GPU like the 4K modes or even 1440p maybe. So that's my recommendation there. But if we're stepping up and playing at 1440p, then your selection of CPUs open up and that's where I would definitely recommend even some of the Ryzen CPUs. Now on the 3070, we recommend it all the way down to the 3600, 3600X, and of course the other Intel CPUs. On the 3080, I mean, we're talking about a $700 high-end GPU that's capable of really insane 4k performance so I wouldn't necessarily pair this with just a 3600 and while it's true if you're doing 1440p ultra wide or 4k the pressure is a little bit off your CPU and it's mostly on the GPU but there are cases where the CPU still will make a difference so I think if you're gonna go and get a high-end 3080 don't pair it with a cheap CPU I would get at the very minimum on the AMD Ryzen side a 3700x maybe 3800 of course if you do 3900 or even the 3950x it's going to be absolutely amazing on the intel side likewise i would go with at least like a 9700k and above a 10900k if you really want to pair it sort of with one of the better cpus but i definitely would refrain from pairing a 3080 with a much lower end cpu because there will be some cases where you may run into some issues not having a powerful enough cpu so if you're getting a 3080 i would definitely just try to get a little bit higher end cpu you. That way you can guarantee that you're not going to be bottlenecking on any particular game or any particular resolution. So for me, really the ideal setup on a 3080, a GPU that's going to be awesome at gaming as well as content creation, would be on the AMD side, a 3900 XT. Those clock higher than the previous 3900 X. On the Intel side, something like a 10900 K or even the 10700 K, I think will pair really nicely with the 3080. And then you could pretty much guarantee you're not going to have any bottlenecking issues regardless of whatever resolution that you're playing with. Now if you're stepping into the 3090 
Of course, I think you absolutely need a good CPU to go along with this, because who knows what sort of performance numbers this 3090 is going to be able to pull. Um, you're going to have a lot more flexibility and resolutions. Something like the 3090, I think, absolutely screams for a high-end CPU. I would say if you're still doing gaming, something like the 3950X with a little bit of content creation. If you're doing just content creation, of course, you can go into the Threadrippers. That's going to work absolutely amazingly with this 3090. But for gaming, something like the 3950 which has actually pretty good clocks for a 16 core CPU. That's going to be great. On the Intel side, I would definitely do the 10900K. If you have a 3090 GPU, you definitely want to pair it with something very powerful just because you don't want to let any little thing bottleneck that GPU. Regardless of whatever resolution you're playing with, you definitely want to make sure you have the most processing power available at that end. Now let's make an important note about the motherboard selection. Now while most motherboards that are you know fairly more recent, they're all going to run these GPU fine. I don't really think you're going to run into any issues there. The big question here is PCIe Generation 3 versus Generation 4, and I've spoken about this previously in a different video. Now of course AMD with the X570 motherboards, they have PCIe Generation 4 already, and you can use you know different NVMe drives that are much faster than regular Generation 3 drives. So that technology is here and these new Nvidia GPUs will take advantage of this technology. It's a little bit too early to tell how much of a performance difference there may be. Generally even today with something like a 2080 Ti you don't really see that big of a difference. Maybe one to two percent at times but in the future especially with something like the 3090 I would definitely look to get PCIe generation 4. So previously I did recommend both Intel as well as AMD but I think if you want to future proof yourself you probably are a little safer going Going over to the AMD side just because that PCIe generation 4 eventually I think will make more and more of a difference as things get optimized for it. The reason that I sort of recommended both Intel and AMD in the beginning, the difference probably won't be that big. Like we mentioned, one to two percent, worst case, maybe a couple percentage points higher. And sometimes the clock advantage that the Intel CPUs have over AMD, depending on the resolution you're playing at, may actually erase that difference of PCIe generation four, since it's just a couple of percentage points. So it's not as big a deal. And Intel and their Z490 platform, while it's not currently active, I believe that with the 11th generation Rocket Lake, we are going to see PCIe Generation 4 available on the Z490 motherboard. So if you have one of those now and you upgrade your CPU later, you may still be sort of future proof. So there's that end as well. But if you definitely want to be future proof, maybe I would stay away from the Intel motherboards and go with something like an X570. And in that end, depending on the GPU and CPU you're pairing it with, I would just go with a nice quality motherboard. Of course, if you're going to be doing like a Ryzen 3950 the X. I personally have the X570 godlike motherboard. That way you have a lot more headroom in terms of overclocking with the VRMs. You have a lot more features. It kind of fits that. And that's a motherboard that could really go really nicely with a 3090 as well. It's going to have PCIe Generation 4. Um, if you're going to be doing something like a 3070 or even the 3080, I think any of the motherboards X570 should be fine. Even something like an Asus Strix or the Gigabyte Master I've used before. It's very, very good. On the Intel side, of course, the Z 490 motherboards. Once again, the Asus Strix is a very good motherboard. If you want to have a little bit beefier CPU in there, like a 10900K, um, I'm personally also using the Apex motherboard. That's going to allow you to just overclock a little bit more. Um, that way you can take even more advantage of whatever games and resolutions that you're playing. But I think any of these motherboards will be able to handle the 3000 series just like they can with the 20 series. Aside from PCIe Generation 4, you don't really have any extra requirements between the 20 series and newer 30 series. GPUs. And then I'd say the same about RAM. Um, usually 3200 megahertz seems to be the sweet spot for a lot of gaming applications. So I wouldn't really go too crazy. You know, 16 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz RAM should be more than enough. A lot of people have also been asking about power supply requirements. If you have a very sort of not good quality power supply, maybe I would look to upgrade that. If you're doing something like a, a 3080, I would say the sweet spot is probably around 850 watts, maybe a thousand watts if you want to have a little bit more headroom. And of course, if you're going to be doing the 3090, I would go with at least a thousand watts, maybe even 1200 watts. Not that you're going to take up all of it, but that's just going to give you more flexibility if you're overclocking your CPU, if you add different components later on, you know, hard drives. So it's better to have more headroom because these 30 series GPUs definitely have increased power consumption over the 20 series. So generally, 
generally, they're going to be a lot more power hungry than the previous generation. So to summarize, those will be my recommendations for the 3080 and 3090. I would definitely try to pair at least a pretty nice CPU with them since these are really high end cards. I know people want to pair a little bit lower end CPU, but I think in general, there may be cases where you're going to end up bottlenecking yourself. If you're going to go out of your way to get one of these GPUs and you're getting a new CPU, at least get something that's going to guarantee that you're not going to have any bottlenecks. If you have existing CPUs already, maybe even older generation Intel CPUs or, or current or older generation AMD Ryzen CPUs, I wouldn't necessarily go out of my way to upgrade unless you're going to be playing somewhere where the CPU really is going to be a big factor like 1080p, 360 or 240 hertz or really high refresh rates that we mentioned before. And if you have something that's really not clocking too high, that's when I would definitely look into possibly upgrading your CPU. But otherwise, if you have something now, I would wait until you get the GPU play with it, see what your game is doing, see what sort of performance you're getting. And if you feel like you're getting bottlenecked, then after I would upgrade the CPU, as depending on the resolution, like we mentioned, 4K, the CPU is gonna become less and less important, but we also have to see the behavior of these new GPUs, if they bring along with them any other advancements in technology. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Remember to subscribe, smash that like button, check out my other videos, and I'll see you guys on the next one.